Hey, Shaw, how are you doing tonight? Good evening, Britain. How are all the Contra Lemire fans out in the world? They are, I am sure, wishing it were a little bit nicer weather and not quite so oveny, but I think they're probably doing well, and I'm sure they are loving their art and loving learning about art. We're always so, trying to get people, we're always trying to get people that special piece that gets on their forever wall. Art. Whose art are we looking at today? Today, we are going to be looking at an artist, Richmond Kelsey. He is a California artist. The piece that is sitting next to us is actually Noro Estuary, which is a watercolor lithographic print um, from California. And Richmond spent most of his life in California with a little stint in the islands during World War II. Um, Richmond was an instructor in California. His preferred medium was actually watercolor. He loved doing plein air, which is out in nature. Oh. And most of his career, everybody just assumed he'd be an art instructor and he'd be a plein air painter. He kind of tripped everybody up. He went to Disney, became wow. an illustrator and an animator, and actually got up to the point of art director and some of the pieces that he worked on back in the 50s were fairly significant pieces. You've probably got a DVD somewhere in your house of these pieces like Fantasia, like Pinocchio, like Dumbo. And in Fantasia, he was the art director and actually did the springtime dance of the maidens, I believe it was. Yep. Oh, lovely. Lovely, getting some wings, we are on it. So as he became more talented, not really more talented, but more capable, he actually was more comfortable flexing in his art. So when Uncle Sam called in World War II, he was actually ready to go with the front facing troops to the islands in the Pacific and become a map maker. Oh, he didn't wow. stop what loving a, his art. What a great use of his art, turning it in for something that's more of a visual thing to something that's very functional. Absolutely. And what he did, he continued to learn and do plein air art on the side. But obviously, he was looking at something very different from his native California. And he integrated that into his work at a later time, his colors became brighter and more pastel driven to mimic the flowers and to mimic the ocean. Um, he did come back after World War II, uh, did a bunch. If you were a child in the 70s, you probably read Golden Books, mm -hmm. those books with the gold cover. He did a number of illustrations for those and they went, you know what, I, I got this. And he actually stepped in and wrote a book about a cricket called Good Enough Gizmo. Oh, wow. So he illustrated it and he wrote it. Um, afterward, he went back to Disney. Uh, he had to change again in what he did in his art because the nature of animation had changed. It had gone from Pinocchio, which was pure animation, drawn by cell and it moved to green screen where you were partnering up with the humans and you were interacting with the people think about dick um dick van dyke dick van dyke thank you i had a moment dancing with the penguins during um mary poppins that's partial partial animation and live actor um, so he did that. He did that very well. He did bed knobs and broomsticks and a number of movies in the 60s and 70s that required that integration as an illustrator, animator, and a art director. Okay. Um, and then he made one more pivot near the end of his career. And what he did is he actually kind of got snatched away to do a project in Colorado called Magic Mountain, which was actually a theme park. And what he did is he went from being an art on paper person to actually having to integrate his art into mechanical execution. So he, at the, near the end of his professional career, he had to pivot yet again. And both you and I, because Shaw, you're a working artist. 
as you can tell from everything behind you, artists pivot all the time. That's just how they grow and they develop. So sometimes we'll see a piece in the beginning of an artist's career and you look at the end and you go, that can't be the same person. It often is. It's definitely a journey that each artist takes and to hear that he was able to have success the entirety of his life and be of service, not only to the country, but to Disneyland as well. I think it would now, be interesting if we were able to get this amazing artist, Mr. Richmond, as an actual Hall of Fame Disney artist. If you like some of the work that he does or this picture that we have in front of you, please drop a like in the comments and let us know how you feel about getting him on the Disney Hall of Fame. And may I suggest, read the blog at contralimir.com because that's gonna give you a little bit more feedback and it's gonna give you references. So if you really wanna be an individual who is a knowledgeable vote down below, this is a great opportunity to do so. And the blogs are around forever, so you can certainly check them out at any time. And you can always, at the website, make a comment on the blog because we love hearing from our tribe one thing we do ask you do is make sure you like subscribe for the tribe and follow that way when we get new content you're the first to know as it should be I want to thank so Shaw yeah thank you for your time thank the tribe for the time anything you'd like to add I'm just glad that we're able to get together as Contra Lemire, talk about art, talk about artists. And hopefully some of these conversations will lead to some of these pieces finding their forever walls. Maybe that oh, will be yes. on someone out there's house. Believe you me, our first and foremost desire here at Contra Lemire is indeed lay an education down so people feel more comfortable with the art. And then having people find the right art for their forever wall because art tells stories, art creates memories, art Starts is a, a conversation. wonderful way. That's how eat is a great thing to have on your wall in your kitchen, but there aren't going to be a bunch of people standing around with a beverage on a Friday night talking about an eat sign. This, you can now tell them the story about how you really tried to hook this guy up to get into the Disney Hall of Fame and you learned about him and you learned, you went out and found good enough gizmo. You, you, you've, got, you've got a stake in the game with him now. And that's a great story and will always be an interesting story. Thanks for this time. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Shaw. You have a terrific week. Love the work you've done.